Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I am going to show you how to make this cover um, for the tab journal. And we will be, I will be doing a video as well on how I made, put together the tab journal part as well. So we'll start with the cover. I've had lots of interest in that. Now this particular cover, I don't have um, any more of this that hasn't already been uh, used elsewhere uh, for the cover. So I've just got a piece of upholstery fabric. It's, it's good to have a good weight upholstery fabric and I just thought that I've used this fabric before and I love it and it just goes really really nice with the digitals that I think I'm going to use on the inside. So what you want to have um, is you want a piece of fabric for the cover that's 12 and a half by nine and a quarter. And that is to do the size of tabs, uh, envelopes that I've used. And I will give you those sizes in that journal, that upcoming journal. And then you're gonna need a piece of canvas or something heavy. It could be another upholstery fabric uh, for the inside. And I just cut it, actually I rip it so you can see the little bits of fuzz on the edges. I rip it so that you can just see the uh, fraying on the outside. Uh, at this around the same size. You're going to need two pieces of uh, cardstock and this is the Recollections um, craft paper and I've cut them to one and a half by um, nine and a quarter the height of the uh, of the fabric and then I've cut this piece to fit on the front uh, that we're going to be putting lace on and the actual measurements of this let me see where is my ruler ruler I don't oh here it is just one second I've been busy making so this morning so it is oh five by uh, four and a quarter and then I've Got about an inch and a quarter there, and then I've just slanted it down. So, you know, you can decide. It doesn't have to be precise. So that'll be for the pocket. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces, and I'm just going to glue them to each other. If you have a thicker card so stock than what I have here, then one thickness is probably good. I, I know the 49 Market card stock is very thick, and it probably is fine without having to reinforce it with another cardstock. I just like to make sure I have a good solid weight in the spine. So I'm just going to glue those together. So we'll get that extra little bit of heft. I hope everyone's doing well. We're good. We have earned our stripes as grandparents in the last few days. Um, our uh, grandson, Will, has been uh, with us uh, during the day for two days because he's been ill. Uh, he's had, as it turns out, um, he has a, um, they think, an underlying ear infection of some sort. So, uh, of course, he couldn't go to daycare. And we didn't want to leave mom and dad high and dry and they're working so we were, we said yes we'll take we'll take our happily take our boy so I'm just going to set that down you can't see the numbers but I'm just trying to see where there's 12 and a half so around six and a quarter I want to make sure I have the middle of this I'm going to actually attach that on there at with the middle of it roughly at six and a quarter. So I'm just going to use my art glitter glue for this. Because I changed the, um, flipped over my uh, self-healing board, this one has centimeters and I'm just more attuned to um, using inches. So that feels like there's six and a quarter. I just want to make sure I am somewhat straight. 
six and a quarter roughly, and a little bit from six and a quarter. Okay. And six and a quarter. I think this could come over this way a teeny bit. So that's going to glue in there and it adheres really quickly. Okay, now I'm going to take my um, oops, take my fabric out of the way and I'm just going to put this down because I'm about to use white glue. Grab it. I'm starting to wonder where did I put, I know I have them out here, um, the cards. I like to spread it, ah, there we are. Spread my glue with an old, an old card. So here we go. Making sure that we're in frame. I'm standing up. I just get a little bit more leverage when I do that. So I'm going to just take this glue. I love to use Aileen's Tacky Glue. And I'm just going to, this is exactly how I do it. <laughs> I go around the edges and then I, you know, just kind of do a zigzag here and there. So yes, we had Will for two days, Thursday and Friday, and then we had our granddaughters for a sleepover last night. We'd promised them. And um, I am, I'm bushed, just saying. Uh, they were terrific. Uh, it's just, you know, when you're not used to that level of activity all of the time, back in the day, it wasn't a problem. Now it's just, it's a little bit new to me again. Okay, there we go. So then I take my card and I just spread my glue out as closely as I can to all the edges. I keep my fingers in, I always have it up in the left quarter. If you were left-handed you might want to start from that side. Um, I just don't know. Whatever works for you. I'm trying to get a fairly even spread of glue across. And I can see where I've missed a little bit, but it's a nice thing about using the card. You can pick up where you have a little extra and then just put down some more. And we are going to sew around this as well. Um, not today, because I'm going to have to let it dry. Okay. So, we've got this with the glue, with the spine. And I want to try and center it on the bottom here. So that we've got a bit of the the um, fringe around the whole outside. So then I take the second one and I just making sure I'm getting in where that spine, that uh, board spine construction is. Okay. And then on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. You can probably just see, I'm going to show you with the card where that spine is. Just like that. So I mean, this has to dry. And it doesn't take, like fine, like if you left it, um, you know, whole morning it should be fine. Oh, you can see fairly well in there. So you can go like this and you can see if you just let it dry like that, it's going to be a very um, structured square, like a fairly sharp edged spine. So what I did with the other one is I just took it while it's still wet and you know, making sure you're not moving the spine itself. I just started to like fold it a little tiny bit, like just pressing it on the edge with my fingers. Um, and like there's no real science to it um, other than, you know, I'm just trying to take away that little bit of an edge. And it just made it 
it rounded it quite nicely in in the other one uh, and I think it would do the same for this one as well so sometimes it'll resist you a little bit so if you go in on this side and then you can see that you're rounding it a little bit just on the edge I mean it's not going to be absolutely perfect I didn't put it over anything like a form of any sort um, I think it's better easier to come at it from this angle um, so if you just and I'm not even rounding to the center I'm just rounding that edge it's kind of hard um, I hope you're getting the concept it's not an easy one to just show on camera uh, but it's a feel like you can you can start to see I think that it's rounding you're losing that edge a bit so I've just done that sort of thing and then it, we've lost that see how we've lost that uh, really sharp edge and then what I want to do is go back with my the one that was has no glue on it and just pull just to make sure I have glue is still where it needs to be uh, and do it in here as well and then while it's drying um, you can come back and just have a look again see by going back at it with this I, I lose a little bit of the it was starting to look like it buckled a little bit with the fabric and I don't want it to buckle so at this stage you could let it dry open like that and you've already got a bit of a rounded spine so I was let it dry open and then maybe after an hour come back and see uh, how it's doing but this to me is the perfect amount of a curve um, we've just got a wee bit of a curve it's not too much and not too little so that's as simple as that is so either side of these could be the front of the journal I'm not sure which yet um, so let's put this aside um, maybe I'll just set it here to the side and because we have a bit of time left we could use that time I'm going to take this out of the way we don't need it um, isn't it funny how we cover our surfaces that are meant to keep our desks from getting dirty with, with something so that our surface doesn't get dirty as well uh, this I'll take upstairs and I will once it's dry, clean it all off, which is great. So this is the little piece that I'm going to cover with some lace. So my thought was, I have this beautiful piece of linen. Isn't that lovely? I know it's hard to even think about. Um, gosh, that's pretty just like that, isn't it? Oh, goodness, what am I going to do? Hmm. If I have this here, then I, I'm thinking, would I then not want to put anything else on it? Uh, the other one has all of this, this yummy built upness, but this is very, very lacy. Whereas this one, let's just see what we think. If it was like that with the brown, has a different look. So I don't know. Um, Maybe I'll save this for something else because maybe I, I'm i not ready. I'm not ready to, to, to do that one. I'm not ready to cut it. So I have a piece of, of uh, linen. Uh, it's actually, I think, a pillowcase linen. And I'm going to take my... Uh, just going to cover it with some linen with this glue. Put this glue and cover the whole surface with the linen or the fabric, whatever you have, cotton, muslin, whatever. I just find it makes a nice base for, um, actually it makes it it'd be easier for me to do it this way. Just wanted to make sure I'm, I've got this going on the right way so that I don't cover the wrong side. If I put the white on this side, then that's not going to fit the right angle on the book book cover okay so we've got that 
Where are my scissors? Goodness, I did all my prep on the other side of my desk and I left my favorite scissors on the other side. So, we're just going to cut this off. Midge was so thrilled to have the... She adores those girls. Um, she adores Will too, but she's not quite sure what you do with a 17-month-old. Um, but the girls, oh my goodness, she just was so excited. Anytime they're around, sleeping over, she wants to be right where they are, doing whatever they're doing. Okay, so keep a little bag of linen, or not linen, of um, bits that I use when I'm looking to just cover uh, something. And um, I feel like some of these might work. I like to take two of those at a time. Um, is there anything else in here I might want? It's a little bit of a stripe. Oh, I might use that elsewhere. I'm going to set that aside. Okay, I'm going to set this down. So these are the pieces I have to play with. And I'm just going to... Uh, I've got this piece. This is, I think, a more modern uh, sort of lace. And I like the idea of maybe putting that on the base. So, something like that. And I might just do keep those little circles there. That looks kind of cool. Alright, move that out of the way. I don't want this to be super white. Um, like I want it to look like it has some color and age. So I have this piece. It's a nice piece of linen that I'll use for something else. That's a bit... No, that's good. Sorry. Um, let's see. I need to have it somewhere where where um, it's going to uh, have enough real estate to fit on. So we could set something like that there. That lace just is kind of creating a, a bit of a substrate. I like that there. Um, this is some vintage linen that I have that might be kind of fun if we set that there. Yeah. Do we want it here? Could do. And then maybe these could go like that. That way we don't have too many super straight lines. Those could go like that. I like how that looks. And then that will be on the uh, that will be on the side of our of our cover. So I don't glue anything. I just I do this, and then I get my machine. I just want to put this in my glue, and I'm going to go ahead and start to uh, use sew on here. So I'm just going to set this over here for a second so I can grab this machine. Apologies. I've hit, I know I hit the, uh, I hit the um, tripod. Okay. I'm going to put it on a zigzag. And I think what I'll do is I'll go try and go around the triangle. I want to make sure, there we go, it moved a little bit. Make sure as I go I may adjust the lace a little bit. So we're just gonna, I can feel the cardstock underneath so that I know where I'm where I'm headed. Okay. And I want to make sure I'm over here on that point. I'm gonna come over this way. Yeah. And 
come on up. So that's got us, um, I did pretty good hitting the edges. So now I know I want to come down here and just kind of set this in so it's not flipping and flopping anywhere. I'm going to come down to here and I'm just going to go across. To this piece of lace, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm just going to circle around it and then I'm going to circle back up. I feel like that might be enough. We still, we've got some little bits like that that come up, but I like that. So I've just kind of done a little fun pirouette. <laughs> Did I just say pirouette? Yes, I did. I said pirouette. I'm so sorry, guys. It's just I don't have the best setup for doing this sort of video. Um, but I'm doing it anyway, <laughs> per your request. So <clears throat> what would happen is, um, like I said, this I let this dry like this. It's, we're going to get a good, we're going to get a good shape in there. And so what will happen is this will be attached like so, um, I would glue it down first, and then, um, I think it's gonna be really pretty, and then I would, you know how I make, uh, take a piece of cardstock and put a divot on either side. I like to put those in these because it gives it some weight. I don't have that handy. Let me see, do I have a piece of cardstock? So I can at least sh show you what I'm talking about. Um, Okay, we'll use a ruler. So the cardstock, I cut them to two and a quarter inches wide, or two inches wide, because this is narrower. I put a divot here, and I get the whole lit width or length, and then I sew around just the piece of cardboard, just the straight edge that's on the inside on both, glue it in, and then I will zigzag stitch around the whole thing. So that will be our cover for our um, tab journal. Gosh, I hope this made sense. I apologize if it seemed a little uh, out there, but um, this is exactly my process. Uh, and yeah, you can see I've got a little bit of a bubbling happening here. I didn't have that with the other fa fabric. So I just go back with my card and Try and let this dry. Best to let it dry. And then we'll, we should be good after that. So, just run your finger down if you're concerned at all. And we can get that to lay a little bit more flat. It's hard to do this. The challenge is that, I mean, normally you don't like to bend anything while it's still wet, um, but it's the only way you can get that spine to cooperate is if you do it when it's a bit wet. So I just sit here and I'll smooth it for a bit uh, with my fingers. And it will, like this side is happy. This side is was not as happy. Uh, and it seems like it, you can see that it's it's uh, cooperating a little bit more now. That side's better. But otherwise, we may end up just having a bit of a wrinkly look there. Um, but I'm I'm not unhappy with that. I think that will be fine. And we'll see how she looks when she's dry. Just kind of flatten it out like that. And here, flat it out. The spine's already curved. So this is definitely seat of your pants stuff. You're seeing how I would deal with something that doesn't cooperate um, in real time. So see, that's already started to look better. Uh, just have to 
kind of play with it. Manipulate it with your fingers and your fingernails. And like I said, your book's going to be like this most of the time anyway, and that's, I think it looks pretty. So we will see how it turns out. Thank you so much for joining. I hope this one in some way helpful to you. Um, just give you an idea of how I make this with a little bit of a curved spine. It's only the second time I've done it, so, um, and that probably shows. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.